Hello and welcome to our listeners today, where we go into some bite-sized learnings around how do we uh, improve our workplaces on all fronts, whether it's culture, performance, inclusiveness. And so I'm excited for our guest today. We have Yvonne Kelly with us, who specializes in the space of diversity and inclusion. Uh, she's the co-founder and CEO of Glow Up Careers. And we're excited to have her today because we're going to be talking about, you know, we're constantly as business leaders, CEOs and people and culture managers complaining about talent shortages and not having enough people in the business. So um, Yvonne's really gone into this space of uh, tapping into an incredibly specialized area of refugees and minority groups that can amplify uh, our businesses in terms of talent, just a new uh, form of talent. So I'll let you give us a little bit of a brief and then maybe we'll go take a deep dive into this space. Yeah, great. Thank you. So lovely to be here and love the work that you're doing. Um, yeah, just before I kind of talk a little bit about myself, I just wanted to touch on some of those statistics that you mentioned around talent shortages. Um, so from kind of a refugee and migrant um, areas where we do a lot of work in, um, I was at a UNHCR event recently for World Refugee Week and they spoke about some of the stats. So in 2013, there was 51.2 million people globally that were forcibly displaced. Um, and in 2023, they just announced that there's more than 110 million so like that's doubled in the last 10 years. Um, and obviously with all of that's been happening around the world with conflict, but also with environmental disasters that are occurring, um, more and more people are being displaced. And they're, they're being forcibly displaced from their homes through no fault of their own. Then on the other side, we have um, all these skill shortages, as you mentioned. Uh, so there's McKinsey um, put out some research to say that by 2030, there's going to be about 85 million um, jobs that are we just can't fill. So from a skill shortage pers uh, pers um, perspective and um, there's another study that's just recently uh, only last week in Australia is saying that there's 370,000 um, digital worker shortfall is projected for Australia by 2026. So again, like a real insufficient um, pipeline of skills. So that's really kind of my area is looking at like, how can we fill some of these skill shortages with this amazing diverse talent that's out there. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> my name is Yvonne and I've uh, worked in the recruitment and talent sector for my whole career. And four years ago on World Refugee Day launched Glow Up Careers. Um, we're a profit for purpose business and a social enterprise. And our, our vision is really to empower everyone to have the career of their dreams, no matter who they are, where they're from. So what are the benefits for businesses? Like clearly, of course, there's the benefit of having the individuals, but what have you found working with uh, refugees, new migrants? What do they bring that we may not have in our mainstream talent pool? Yeah. So um, as I mentioned, you know, they've gone through such horrendous, a lot of them like really massive life experiences. So resilience is huge. Um, you know, we before we recorded, we were talking about mental health and um, the importance of supporting that. So resilience is such a big part of that. Um, and they come with it in spades. <laughs> so um, bringing someone in with that amount of resilience to be able to kind of showcase that to other um, employees, they come with um, a real kind of loyalty. So if they work with organizations, they feel really grateful for the experiences. Um, and they come with a lot of um, potential. So Again, unfortunately, we don't see a lot of that potential is tapped into. A lot of diverse talent in Australia gets stuck at those entry level roles. So part of what we're doing through mentoring and allyship is helping organizations to build leaders that can coach and mentor diverse talent into higher level roles. So, um, you know, it's been interesting the last few weeks with the Matildas uh, talk. You know, there's a lot of talk around gender equality and um equal pay and also like you know women senior level roles and it's the same with uh, refugees and migrants in relation to them progressing into more senior level positions so 
Yeah, we're really working with organizations to have clarity in career pathways and career opportunities and having um, leaders internally that can support that talent to really get the best potential out of them. So there's also all the other things about kind of cultures, different cultures and languages and food is a big one. So yeah, lots and lots of benefits, but I think from a kind of strategic business perspective, also really kind of connecting into ESG and um, sustainable development goals and CSR and, um, you know, just opening up that conversation around diversity and how can the organization get involved in different community initiatives. And yeah, so um, once we find that we work with an organization and kind of plant the seed or they take a refugee, it just can open and blossom into, yeah, a lot of amazing different opportunities. Yeah, I think diversity is definitely one of the key benefits that comes out of this is just having different perspectives across the table, right? Your organization in terms of how it's meeting the needs of even the consumers that you're serving, just that whole experience amplifies because now you're also looking at perspectives of what is represented in Australia now is a very multicultural community. Um, and, and hence the customers and the consumers that we also serve in our businesses, are they represent the multiculturalism. So have you got any statistics? Are there some sort of, is there validation around potentially uh, migrants and refugees, do they stay longer in businesses than? Yeah, than so I don't have, so the first thing is, um, the, the stats that I do have, have is that um, it takes on average three years for a refugee to find work in Australia. So that's pretty horrendous statistic. And are they looking at the same places uh, like your traditional sort of advertising or recruitment spaces or do they go down a different path when they're looking at jobs? So how do we reach yeah, that? So when, yeah, so when they come to Australia, um, they go through a settlement service organization uh, who are yeah kind of amazing they support them through their livelihood and getting them settled in and tax file number and all those kind of basic things and part of the um for purpose work so we do a lot of work in um kind of uh, training and diversity and professional services work but our impact work is all around helping an individual coaching of refugees to help them find a job and that coaching is around um understanding the job market and how it works here so key optimization and how they use uh, applicant tracking systems and how talent teams place jobs and it is um quite different to what the job market used to be um in that it is all around kind of al algorithms and keywords and matching so they don't know that when they come here like often they have no idea as to how any of that works and we also find that a lot of Australians who are coming new onto the market have maybe been in a job for a long time don't know it either so it's, it's not just that that cohort and um, so we help kind of prepare them we partner with these settlement services agencies a lot of their um, employment teams come from more of a social work perspective so they're looking at how can they help them settle in and this is where over the last few years we've been partnering and training uh, the staff within those community organizations to give them kind of a, a more up-to-date view around talent and job search and how that process works and setting them up for success so yeah it's really important to give them the tools to uh, one of the refugees we partner with says you know to learn how to play the game so LinkedIn and and um, they often come with no networks so often a lot of jobs in Australia are are filled through networks and who you know um, and when they come they just don't have that network available to them so teaching them how they can build a network on LinkedIn yeah yeah and so they lack the network they probably also lack the local experience so mm. how are we validating that so that's a really interesting one. Like, unfortunately, there's still bias in in the hiring process out there. Um, mm -hmm. in relation to last year, I was working with a, a team in Melbourne, and um, they work within a local council, and they're looking at kind of how do they overcome racism and bias in their kind of council area. And it was really interesting because through that discussion, two of the the panel members, um, discussed so that when they first came to Australia, they actually had to change their name to an Anglo name in order to get a job. So one lady had been out of work for a year. The minute she changed her job to an Anglo name, like within a week, she got a job offer. So, so there's some kind of, there's these biases and racism that still occurs that we really need to kind of get over and break that, <laughs> that hurdle. Um, But yeah, just making sure that they, um, 
they're kind of highlighting the expertise that they have overseas, making it relevant. So what we get them to do is look at the job ads, make sure that they're using the right keywords that are in the current job ads here, using the language that companies are using um, and in roles and matching that with the experience that they've had overseas. And sometimes that varies, but most of the refugees that we work with have like ample expertise in their own country. They have degrees, they have masters and um, you know, sometimes it matches exactly. And sometimes there's a bit of training that they need to do to just get, yeah, to get up to, to date. But they're really fast learners and so enthusiastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I can I can imagine. And so it goes to that transferable skills as well. It's really just as people in culture managers being able to identify what are those easily transferable skills that they can bring into the organization. Yeah, absolutely. So looking at those kind of entry points last year, we supported all of the Afghan evacuees that came to Australia. And there was such a broad range of skill sets that they brought. Like there was engineers, there was doctors, there was lawyers. And <laughs> um, yeah, a huge range of skill sets. So um, it's just about yeah making sure that the job ads are a little bit um, like they're not overly specific so that you're leaving a bit of flexibility to say, um, you know, we want, yeah, we want you to kind of, grow into this role like at least you can meet some of the the main criteria but we do find that a lot of organizations and talent teams they just put way too many criteria <laughs> um, and then it just those individuals don't have a chance so they they don't get a look in especially on the job like the job boards because if they have like the key criteria and if um somebody applies and they don't have it well they just go into a black hole they're not seen so um for organization i'd just say yeah be a bit flexible with your job ads and also choose carefully the positions that you have a really caring manager and um, that you can see the more longer term positive impacts that this is going to bring to the organization. It's not always just a quick, short solution. But what I can say is the organizations that have hired refugees and migrants have just got such amazing feedback and sharing. And um, yeah, like they <laughs> we have so many advocates now. Uh, in our community and yeah, in Australia that can see real benefits quite quickly. Yeah. And I think what you say is, um, is real across though, just anyone that you bring into the business, you do want them to be able to be um, not so pigeonholed in the skills and the value that they put into the organization and the team. We know that some of the best people we work with within our organization, whether it's our leaders or our peers, are the ones that go above and beyond and are able to showcase much more than a sort of a very specific skill set, but um, add value a little bit more holistically. So yeah, it does make sense just overall, you know, when we think about how we're advertising and positioning the brand, the business um, to really sh tell a story Right. Yeah, and absolutely. And we part one of our professional development programs is teaching leaders how to become coaches. And so when that those refugees and migrants start and they're matched with a coach that has the proper training, um, it's amazing like what they get out of it as a leader and how that really builds their coaching capacity and they become allies. And and we now have over 200, um, we call them coaches, uh, who have gone through that and they work full-time roles within large organizations and they have all learned so much and become diversity advocates and they're like this is a no-brainer like it's it's so uh, it's so clear now but there's a lot of kind of lack of awareness about refugees and their plight and um you know I think yeah there's been kind of a lot of media and it's just cutting through that and just saying these are people that through no fault of their own have had to leave their home and they're just like you and me and they have a whole range of skill sets rather than as you say pigeonholing them into um it's about looking at those transferable skills giving them an option of some career pathways internally which often doesn't happen so if you can help map out and say you know with this type of training you could go this way or this way or this way and um, they can achieve amazing things and with that mentorship and support internally yeah and they're so loyal like you just get <laughs> that longevity and and really keen to learn and, and often refugees especially have yeah they've um they've missed out like on a lot of time either if they've been in a refugee camp they want to try and catch up so they're quite ambitious they really yes. want to make up for lost time 
And I think whilst uh, this can sound a little bit of an additional work, uh, it's great that part of Glow Up Careers, this is exactly what you do in support organisations in being able to integrate minority groups into the business. So Yvonne, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate all of the insights around this area and how organisations can bring in more diversity and um, and be more inclusive uh, overall. And obviously, there are all of those uh, great outcomes. We get to tap into a, a different town pool and um, open up you know, that opportunity for the business. Thank you for your time and we will catch up again, Yvonne. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>